Your Washington Nationals defeated the Mets last night, 4-1, to one, now taking two of the first three games at City Field. And we're going to be going for the sweep tonight up in Queens, New York. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And this is, of course, on the Locked On Podcast Network where you get your team every single day. And, of course, I thank you for making us your first listen. And as I said earlier, this Nationals team is kind of on fire right now. They took one on Tuesday. They took game two on Tuesday. Two on Wednesday, last night. And then now tonight, we're going for the series sweep with Trevor Williams on the mound. A little bit later in the show, we're going to talk about Trevor Williams making his return to City Field as he has had some really good success there throughout his career. We're going to get into that. I'll tell you all about that. But we're also going to get into some of these past trade acquisitions from the Washington Nationals and how big of an impact that they are having on this team in the Major League Club. I'll tell you all about that and get you all those details. But first, we have to start with, again, breaking down last night's team win. As we get into this season, we continue to go and get to that marathon endpoint of Game 162. You are starting to see some improvements with this team already. Here's the thing that surprised me the most. The starting Pitching has been lights out, and we cannot start this podcast without mentioning Mackenzie Gore last night, who went six innings, 10 strikeouts, only four hits, and most importantly, what I noticed the most is only two walks. Because Mackenzie Gore, up to this point, has been walking a ton of hitters, and that is something that you you expect to see from a young guy. That is not something that we shy away from. You expect to see that from someone who is still only making his second year in the major leagues. And again, even last year, that was only a half season. So this is really Mackenzie Gore's kind of maturing point. You're going to see these gross and these really tough, sometimes really tough passages that he's going to have to get through. And that is what we saw last night from Mackenzie Gore in multiple spots last night, getting big strikeouts. 10 strikeouts against that New York Mets lineup going up against a Pete Alonso, who he held hitless last night. Jeff McNeil, another tough out. There are tough outs all across this New York Mets lineup, and Mackenzie Gore, for the most part, shut them down completely. When you look at a lineup of a Brandon Nimmo, Starling Marte, and then Francisco Lindor, well, guess what? Lindor, Nimmo. Pete Alonzo, Mark Canna, all held hitless last night. Jeff McNeil had two hits, not all of them against Mackenzie Gore. But again, this team, you're starting to see why these pieces that are coming together that will be molding throughout this 2023 season is so important. Seeing the growth and the maturity from Mackenzie Gore at this ripe age is something that, honestly, I didn't really expect too much out of from this season. I did believe going into this year that Mackenzie Gore is and will be our best pitcher without a doubt. But I didn't expect him to be this good. Having 10 strikeouts against that New York Mets lineup, that is something to be said for. That is impressive for a young guy, not even a young guy. If this was Max Scherzer back in 2019 and he strikes out 10 from that New York Mets lineup, that's still pretty impressive. They have a lot of of power guys throughout that rotation. A lot of tough outs. I look at someone like a Jeff McNeil, and I kind of compare him to someone like a Hunter Pence back in the day. If you remember Hunter Pence with the Phillies, he was a tough out. He was not someone that you could just go out there and strike out. That is kind of someone that Jeff McNeil is like as well. And so Mackenzie Gore, navigating through this whole game yesterday, You see the growth, and you see, most importantly, the potential that he brings. 
Because this guy is not just an ace for a bad team, in my mind. I believe that this is someone who could be a Cy Young caliber arm down the line. That's not going to happen this year, and it's not going to happen next year. But that is why development is such an important factor to this Washington Nationals team. And even besides Mackenzie Gore, you see it with the other guys. Like, seriously, Kiber Ruiz, at this point, you're starting to see him turn a corner at the plate. And most importantly, we already know his defense is pretty damn solid. He's a good catcher from what all I can understand for. But over the last nine games, you're seeing what he can do. And most importantly, what we've talked about is his slugging numbers and getting on base. Well, over these last nine to 10 games, that's what he's done. He's batting 360 right now with a 395 on base percentage, a 500 slugging percentage, and an 895 OPS. Oh, and also he's got a five game hitting streak going on. So Kibar Ruiz is starting to click. You're starting to see some of these guys as we get more on into the year develop and get better in places to where they have struggled over the years. And what does that have to do with? Is that the analytics that the Nationals invested in this offseason? Maybe. Is it Davey Martinez and the coaching staff really getting into it with these players and telling them what they should do and coaching them up? Maybe. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter how they're doing it. They're getting it done. And even looking behind or beyond Kibert Ruiz, a not-so-young guy, but someone who has been really damn good so far for this Nationals team is Jamer Candelario, adding another home run to his season, going one for four yesterday with a solo shot. Now, it's not some wildly impressive feat, but he's leading the team in home runs. He's getting it in situations where we need those runs. For a team that lacks the power that we've talked about, that we continue to whine about and talk about how This team needs more slugging. It needs more power. Jamer Candelario has been that consistent factor in this. And he backs it up with a 488 slugging percentage in his last 10 games. He started off a little slow in that department, but he's starting to turn a corner. And you're starting to see back in 2021 when he led the league in doubles. That's the kind of impact players that the Nationals are getting right now. And that, as I keep on saying, is important to a rebuilding squad. It doesn't matter how bad this team is. It doesn't matter the lack of talent and all the holes we have. This hasn't been a bad team to watch at all. Like thinking back to last year at this time, when you have Juan Soto and Josh Bell, that team was pitiful to watch. And it's not because of those two guys. Juan Soto and Josh Bell were still doing their thing. But at the end of the day, they also weren't really doing their jobs. And in the defensive side of things, Josh Bell made a lot of his mistakes over at the first base position. You're not seeing that with Dominic Smith this year. Juan Soto was kind of not a great right fielder last year and has been at points in his career. So now when we fast forward to this year and I look at this team, I would much rather watch this team in 2023 rather than last year's team. Not only is it just a better team, But there's a lot more to watch for with Mackenzie Gore, with Josiah Gray pitching well, with Trevor Williams pitching well, who goes on tonight. And then you have pieces in the bullpen that add to this. A Hunter Thompson, who at this point is leading all MLB relievers in war, according to fan graphs. That is the type of prospects, the type of development that this team wants and needs. And that is the wins in 2023 are those key developments that we continue to see and we'll continue to see as the season goes on when you have guys like Luis Garcia start to pick it up which I think he will at one point Kiber Ruiz I still think he hasn't flashed his ceiling up to this point Josiah Gray has seemed to figure it out and he has all these different pitches to back that up Mackenzie Gore has been that guy And I think he'll continue to be that guy. And he has way outperformed what I thought he would be. Even though I thought that he would be the best pitcher this year, what Mackenzie Gore continues to do so far 
is wildly impressive. Not only has he taken down the Braves, but he's also now taken down the New York Mets. Those are two damn good teams. And maybe the Mets are in a funk. Yeah, we didn't get Scherzer or Verlander against them those two games. Whatever. It's still a good win for a team that needs wins. Let's be honest. So at the end of the day, this team right now has actually been fun and competitive to actually watch compared to last year. And you can take that win with a grain of salt, but at the end of the day, a win is a win. And not only are we winning on the field, but we're winning off the field with the development of these guys and however they're doing it because you're already starting to see the small, tiny improvements that will add up into a winning ball club. And we're going to talk about, we're going to look at some of these guys who have been with the Nationals over the last few years who have been traded here to the Nationals. We're going to look at what they have done because we have some impact guys on this roster through these trades over the years that are making a big initial impact in the major leagues. I'm going to tell you about those guys, but before we do that, I got to tell you guys about my friends over at eBay Motors. And here's the thing, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money comes back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. When you shop on eBay Motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and all the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible eligible items only. And exclusions always do apply. And now we get back into it as we have to talk about some of these trade acquisitions from the Washington Nationals throughout the years. And here's the thing. We know that we have traded away Max Scherzer, Trey Turner, Juan Soto, Josh Bell, all these different guys. And Daniel Hudson, another one that I think a lot of people slept on when we shipped them off in that 2021 deadline. But here's the thing. Here is what we've got in return for some of those guys. Josiah Gray back in the Max Scherzer deal and Trey Turner. You got Josiah Gray and Kibet Ruiz in that deal, along with a couple other guys who haven't cracked the majors just yet. Mason Thompson at that 21 deadline for Daniel Hudson. Lane Thomas, again, back at that 2021 deadline. You got him for John Lester. Mackenzie Gore and C.J. Abrams back in the 2022 deadline for Juan Soto and Josh Bell. So let's start with Kibet Ruiz and Josiah Gray. Josiah Gray so far this season, after his first start, we all knew that going into this year, Josiah Gray, it was kind of like a, hey, we got to see it now because last year was not good enough. Leading the major leagues in home runs, leading the National League in walks, that is not something that we are looking forward to. That is not something that you should be doing. But if you're going to make that mistake, you're going to make it earlier in your career, which he did. And now to bounce back this year, after having a rough first outing against the Braves, he has bounced back and his his ERA is sitting in the twos right now. That is the kind of production that we want to see from Josiah Gray. And as we go on this season, you're going to continue to see growth from him in just in general. Because as he added this cutter, something that he seems to be using at a pretty decent rate so far, striking out Starling Marte with that cutter back with the bases loaded in the fifth inning two nights ago, you're starting to see that pitch grow on him a little more, even though the numbers on it so far earlier this year haven't been that great. But in that situation against a right-handed hitter, you're throwing that cutter that's going to be in the zone and then it dips off that last second. That is a valuable pitch that he's starting to trust. And as he trusts that, he's going to use it in situations like he did the other night. 
And at points, it cuts so hard, it almost looks like a slider, which is not really the point of the pitch, but it tells you the kind of movement that he has on those. And then, of course, Kibert Ruiz. I said it earlier in this first segment. Kibert Ruiz, we talked about, yes, the defensive side of things, he has value. He's been good, plus solid, and great at times. But at the plate, that's where we need to see him step up a little bit with the slugging, with the hits, timely hits, just better situational baseball. Well, Kiba Ruiz, not even to mention what he has done so far this year, is one of the toughest outs in all of Major League Baseball when it comes to striking him out. You will not strike him out. I can assure you of that. If you are a betting man with my guys over at FanDuel, put some money on Kiba Ruiz not to strike out and you're going to win. I'm not going to guarantee it because I don't know if I can guarantee it. But if there's a bet over there that does that, I'm taking that. Kiba Ruiz, you're starting to see the slugging. You're starting to see the power. You're starting to see the extra base hits. And most importantly, you're starting to see the leadership capabilities that he holds within that clubhouse. Way more vocal now. You see him in the sidelines, in the dugout, talking with the pitchers, talking with the players. That is something that you want to see from someone who's still only 24, 25 years old. He's still a pup. And you're starting to see this already. The development and the leadership that he brings to the table is valuable. And then also, in that 2021 deadline, you have Mason Thompson. As he, as we said earlier, you can make the case for him being a top three reliever in baseball so far in 2023. I'm not saying that's what he is. But so far, the numbers indicate that Mason Thompson has been an absolute stud. And we got that for Daniel Hudson, as I talked about yesterday. As I've said plenty of times, that trade is going to go down as one of the better ones that Mike Rizzo has done. And also another one that I think is a great trade still. John Lester, back in 2021, in return, you get Lane Thomas. Now, some people might laugh. Some people might say, well, this guy has kind of stunk so far in 2023. Yeah, I get it. But if you look at the trends from 2021 and 2022, you would see that his first half numbers have always been low. He's always been a low starter kind of guy. And honestly, we don't need him to be a starting corner outfielder. That's not his job. His job is to fit in as a fourth or a fifth outfielder, a utility guy, someone who can step in at any moment and pinch hit and maybe hit a home run, play a solid defense at times, even though last night he had a bad play, I'll admit. But Lane Thomas for John Lester, someone who was camping around a five ERA back in 2021, and you got someone who is a competitive outfielder, someone who can play really all three positions and be fine out there, you're going to tell me that that's not a win of a trade? Someone who at times affects the team in positive ways. And as the summer starts to heat up and as Major League Baseball allegedly starts to put these juiced balls back in play, which you know they do, you'll start to see more of that from Lane as well. And then looking at the Mackenzie Gore and C.J. Abrams. C.J. Abrams, I'll start with him first. Yes, at times, you see the immaturity when it comes to on the field. And it's not immaturity for his character. It's immaturity for what he is as a baseball player. You see at times where he's a little overwhelmed, which that is okay. He's 22 years old. I can't say that enough. And a lot of Nationals fans, and I try to explain this to teams outside of the NL East and really outside of the Nationals, and they understand it. But us as Nationals fans... We saw Bryce Harper when he was 19 years old come up and dominate. We saw Juan Soto when he was 19 years old come up and dominate. Steven Strasburg, all these guys clicked right away for the Nationals. That's not the case for everybody, even if you're a top 10 prospect. You saw the Cardinals send down Jordan Walker yesterday. He wasn't really that bad, but they want him to work on things down in the minor league. I'm not saying that's going to be coming for C.J. Abrams because, to be honest with you, I don't think that should be the case. I think that he is developed, but I think his issue is rather just catching up to major league hitting because once he gets sent down to AAA, which we have seen at times, look at his numbers. 
The slugging is there. The batting average is there. He's figured out his swing. He just needs to catch up to major league pitching, which at some point he will do. And then Mackenzie Gore, lastly. You see the value of what he brings. Forget the A stuff. Start thinking Cy Young down the road. You might think I'm crazy. Call me crazy. I get it. But I see it from this guy. I see the competitive nature that he brings. Yesterday, when he hits that little, when he gives up that little flare to give up his earned run, as soon as he gave that up, you see him jump up in the air and yell a curse word. <laughs> from that young of a guy, that competitive, someone who wants to win on every single pitch, Max Scherzer like. I love to see that. I need more of that in my life. And that is something, again, to where you see beyond the stats, beyond the numbers into these guys, they fit the mold for Nationals baseball. And that is an important factor when looking at this team going forward. So now we're going to talk about Trevor Williams tonight as he gets the nod against his former team, the New York Mets. And before we do that, I have to tell you guys about our friends from BetterHelp because this show, Locked On Nationals, is sponsored by BetterHelp. And are you getting to know yourself? It can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Therapy is all about depending on your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. And here's the thing, over the pandemic, it was a tough time for everyone. As we continue to get out there and get back into our normal lives, it's going to take some time to adjust. So here's my thing. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnMLB to get 10% off your first month. And Trevor Williams takes the mound for the Washington Nationals tonight as he has been nail so far to start the year in four starts he has a 338 ERA in 21 and a third inning only 13 strikeouts but he's got a 1.08 whip and here's my thing with Trevor Williams I talked a lot about how I wasn't too happy with this signing in the offseason I talked about how he's not really a starter he's more of a short or long relief guy someone who can be an opener for like a Patrick Corbin of some sorts but so far He's proved me wrong. Trevor Williams has been nails so far for the Washington Nationals. And most importantly, when looking at his city field numbers, this has been one of the better ballparks that he's pitched in. In 24 games pitched with eight starts at city field, he has a 2-2-3 ERA, 84.2 innings pitch, and a 1.110 whip. This is someone who, again, has been playing impactful baseball so far this season. You see all the different pitches that are in play for him, the nasty breaking balls. And honestly, what you see with him is a lot of soft contact. That's the kind of things that you want. And in last year's team with 2022, Trevor Williams probably wouldn't have been this successful with the defense that we had last year. And I mean that. This defense this year so far has been well improved. J-Mayer is a major upgrade over at third base over Franco. Shortstop. Alcides Escobar and C.J. Abrams, it's not even a comparison. Second base with Luis Garcia, it's not even a comparison. First base with Dominic Smith and Josh Bell, it's not even a comparison. Now the outfield, the outfield numbers haven't been great. And they've been sort of the same as the last year. But again, that infield is so much better. And there are so many more mistakes that you can make in the infield than you can in the outfield. So my priority is is that infield defense and make sure you make the routine plays. You turn those double plays and you are quick and fast out there because that is what you have to be. When you have someone like a Trevor Williams, who's not going to strike a lot of hitters out, he's not going to walk a lot of batters. He's a soft contact guy. And with contact being made, guess what? I'm captain obvious. You have to make the plays on the defensive side of things. 
You have to make the plays that are given to you on a daily basis. And that is what this Nationals team, for the most part, have been doing so far in 2023. And they've been doing it really well, honestly. And so with Trevor Williams going out there, the keys to the game is simple. Yet again, continue the soft contact, hit your spots, trust your defense, and hopefully, hopefully, we can continue adding on run support from this offense. Because again, we're not going against one of the Mets aces tonight. I can tell you that. This team is going to have to hit. You're going to have to have some run support. And honestly, at some point, Trevor Williams will get rocked around. He will be. It's the nature of baseball. Max Scherzer had it. Steven Strasburg, Patrick Corbin, we know he does. So at the end of the day, hit your spots, Trevor Williams, trust your defense, and lastly for the offense, let's get some run support. Let's hit some home runs. Let's get some extra base hits in there. So thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, tomorrow we're going to talk about some of the farm system and some of these guys who have been wildly impressive so far as I know I talked about it on Monday, but I think we need to get into some other guys as well and a former first round pick that the Nationals got in return for Juan Soto, Robert Hassel has been struggling. We're going to talk about him tomorrow, but again, thank you for listening today. I will catch you guys tomorrow on the flip side.